Today I want to demonstrate how to communicate between view models, and this is pretty common in a WPF application, or really any front-end application, when you have one part of the application that affects another part of the application. And this is also extremely important to understand for other advanced concepts in WPF and front-end applications, such as navigation and state management. Anyways, for communication between view models, I have this demo set up here. So I just have my main window split up, and on the left side, we have just a simple form to create a product. And then to the right, we have a products listing. So what I want is to be able to create a new product. So something like a hat, give it a price and a quantity. And then when I create it, I would want this new product to be added to my list view over here. So I need to communicate that I want this new item added to my products listing view over here. So pretty straightforward view model setup I have here. Just some properties for all the fields on my create product form product name, price, and quantity, and then a command to create the new product that I have right here implemented as a class, nothing implemented yet. We'll get to that in a second. And then I have my product listing view model with my products that I have in the list, and then just some booleans that I bind to in the view. But I set up my products to be an observable collection. So every time I add to this observable collection, it's gonna automatically update that listing in my view. So how are we gonna send the information for the new product that we end up creating to the product listing view model. Well, you might be thinking that maybe the create product command could reference the product listing view model, and then inside this command, we could take our product listing view model and expose a method on this view model to add a new product to our observable collection, and the UI would get updated. And you know, maybe that would work. Maybe we could reference the product listing view model in here, but then that's kind of tight coupling between the create product command and the create product view model and the product listing view model. And that could definitely become an issue if we have to tell multiple view models about our brand new created product, which is pretty common in large applications I have experienced. So we are not going to directly reference the product listing view model in this command. Instead, what we're gonna do is take kind of a pub sub mediator approach to this problem. So inside this create product command, will tell some kind of object about a product that has been created, and then that object that we tell will notify other view models about the created product. So multiple view models can hook into this created product. So my convention for creating this mediator is to have it in a folder called stores. And I know we're dealing with products here, but store has nothing to do with something like a retail or grocery store. And the name store is inspired by JavaScript front-end frameworks that I usually use, such as React and Vue. And I assume they're called stores there because they typically store application state. Now in this example, we're just using this for communication, but in the future, I wanna take this just a step further to show how it can be used to manage application state. So let's create a new store. And of course, this is gonna be the product store because we are dealing with products. So I'll make this public and we're gonna have a method. It can just be a void to create a product. And of course, this will be called by the create product command. And it's gonna have to take in a product We'll call that product. And product is just a simple model that I have for my application. Don't think I've shared this off yet, but just the name, price, and quantity. Pretty simple. So when we create this product, we're going to tell our product listing view model or any other view model that's interested in the new created product about the product. So to support this kind of mediator pub sub approach, of course, we are going to have an event. And the type for this event will just be an action that takes in the created product. And we'll call this event product created. So an action taking in a product that will just be a function that returns void and takes in the created product as the parameter to the function. So whenever our create product command or anything in our application calls this create product method, we're going to raise our product created event. So we will invoke it with the product and just doing this question mark syntax in case there's no subscribers to this event, otherwise we would get a null pointer. And that is actually all we need to do for our store. So we can go into our create product command and let's get some fields in here. First, we're gonna need our create product view model so we can get the details about the product we wanna create. And then of course we will need our product store and let's generate a constructor for that. So when this command gets executed by our create product view model, we're gonna create a new product, just instantiate one of those and set all the properties on this product to be the properties on our view model that we got from the user. So the product name, the product quantity and the product price. And now we can create this product using our product store. So then we call this method, it invokes our event, 
so anyone subscribed to this event can get the information for the created product. So of course, in our product listing view model, we want to get that information. So we are going to get that product store in here. Let's create a field for that and get that through our constructor. And now let's subscribe to that product created event. We'll create a method to handle that event on product created. So when a product gets created, we are just going to add it to our products observable collection. So add a new, I have this wrapped in a product view model. So we'll create a new product view model and pass in the product. And if you're interested in a product view model, pretty straightforward, just grabs all the fields from the product. So now we need to update our constructors for the product listing view model and the create product view model. And I actually have to update what I passed into this create product command. So I have to pass in this view model instance and a product store. And that product store is going to come from my create product view model constructor. So now let's update our view model instantiations. So that is in my application startup. We now need a product store. So we'll just create one of those. And most importantly, the product store that we pass into the create product view model and the product listing view model need to be the same instance. Because otherwise, if they're different instances, then we'll end up raising this product created event on the product store instance, even though the product listing view model would be subscribed to a completely different product created event on a different product store instance. So now finally, let's create our product and see that list view update. All right, 10 hats, $19.99 each, let's create. And there we go, we get our list view updated. And we can just do all the products that we want, keep on updating the list view. So now the last thing I wanna mention, and I usually mention this in pretty much all my videos that deal with some kind of subscription like this. So our product store, we instantiate once at the beginning of our application. And same with our product listing view model. But say that we created and destroyed our product listing view model multiple times throughout our application's lifestyle. Well, if that were the case, then our product listing view model would never be able to get cleaned up and we'd have a memory leak because we were subscribed to this product created event. So this event is always going to reference this method and our product listing view model would never get cleaned up because it still has a reference by the product store. So one thing I like to do is by default, I usually have a dispose method on my view model base, which is what the product listing view model inherits from. So I override that dispose method and then just manually do the unsubscription. So unsubscribe from that method, then we're no longer referenced by the product store and we can get cleaned up. So that's just something to be careful of whenever you have an object that lasts the entire lifetime of the application, like our product store will, and then you expect to be creating and destroying multiple product listing view models throughout your application's lifetime, then you could be prone to memory leaks and you'll definitely have to do this unsubscription manually with some kind of dispose convention in your application. So that is what I believe to be the best approach to view model communication. Create some kind of mediator pub sub object, make sure you have a single instance of that object, and then you can have methods for whatever communication you want to send, and events to broadcast that message to any view models that are subscribed to this event. And this whole pub sub mediator concept is just fundamental to any front end or WPF application. So expect to see this in future tutorials where I go over navigation and other things like managing application state. So hopefully you all can use this in your own applications. If you have any questions, criticisms, or concerns, be sure to leave them below in the comments section. But other than that, leave a like or subscribe for more. Thank you.